I think I'm in. Yes, sorry, Ms. Erkinef, you might not have heard me. Um, you are, it is now your turn okay, to speak. Okay, great, so thank you so much. Go ahead. Hold on a minute. I don't hear you. Let me just make sure. Can you hear me, Ms. Erkinef? I can hear you now. Okay, so you, you just introduce yourself. You have three minutes. Perfect. Good afternoon again, um, uh, Chair Brownsey and Commissioners. Denise Erkinef um, with the Surfrider Foundation South Orange County Chapter. Um, we have a video. Um, could staff please cue that video for us? And I will talk over it in my testimony. Um, the video is, this video is of Shoreline taken November 2020, a few months ago at Capistrano Shores Mobile Home Park. And you will see that that video and that um, those images do not mirror the staff reports um, image of the beach or existing beach. Um, we can clearly see here where armoring projects like this that have been in place for so long have damaged the beach and damaged the shoreline. And this is a prime example of why new development right on the beach needs to be kept in check. This mobile home site along this stretch of shoreline are already subjected to repeated flooding events with waves breaking on and over the revetment and into living areas such as patios and first floor. And these are not typical mobile homes. They are oversized luxury homes on the beach, making them far more pricey than a typical mobile home. Single story mobile homes in this park are listed for sale at over $2 million and the multi-story homes are listed at 7 million, uh, approximately 7 million and some sneaking up a little, uh, a little higher. The video shows this newly constructed unit would be 100% reliant on the existing seawall. It would be vulnerable to wave action during monthly high tides and especially during king tides. Even if the structure is considered mobile, it should not be given leniency under section 30253's requirement that new development shall not rely on shoreline armory. While the applicant claims the homes could be disassembled in a matter of days if necessary, and the staff recommends a special condition to address the potential for removal if a government entity deems this necessary, the permit itself lacks a clear mechanism or specific trigger criteria for when and how that could take place. Furthermore, the owner of the mobile home park, Capistrano Shores LLC, submitted that coastal development permit for seawall repairs in 2012. And that's almost a decade ago. This application has remained incomplete and was withdrawn. It is just a matter of time before extensive repairs and enhancements are sought, perpetuating the seawall for decades to come and ensuring continued accelerated loss of this San Clemente Beach as sea levels rise. Now I'm going to turn it over to Mandy Sackett from Surfrider Foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Erkinef. Thank you, Ms. Sackett. Please state your name for the record and begin your testimony. Hi, I'm Mandy Sackett with the Surfrider Foundation. Um, good afternoon, Chair Brownsey and Commissioners. Over a dozen unpermitted homes currently exist at Capistrano Shores Mobile Home Park, and the, um, they are the subject of ongoing litigation, the Linovitz Capo Shores LLC versus California Coastal Commission case. This started after property, property owners replaced their single story mobile homes with two story mobile homes without first obtaining coastal development permits. Despite several notice of notices of violation, the owners completed construction before ever seeking permits. And that was ignoring Coastal Commission staff's concerns over public view impacts and coastal hazards. So once the issue was finally brought before the commission, homeowners sought to end run these regulations by withdrawing their permit application at the last minute and then trying to invoke the permit Permit Streamlining Act through litigation. So now on appeal, they're arguing that their application should be deemed approved due to time limits under the Permit Streamlining Act. There's a clear disregard for the Coastal Act happening within this development and Surfrider has filed an amicus brief to support the Coastal Commission on that case. Um, and then furthermore, at neighboring devel development at Beach Road, 
numerous homeowners are currently under invest investigation in an open enforcement case for illegal seawalls. And the court case that you heard about today that Mr. Stacy spoke about is Capistrano Shores Property LLC versus California Coastal Commission, which specifically prohibits a waiver of rights to future shoreline armoring as a permit condition at Capistrano Shores, instead only allowing weaker language that the applicant acknowledge that the commission may deny future shoreline armoring if requests or expansions take place. So it's unclear whether this language will be defensible or effectively serve as the commission's typical waiver of rights to future armoring conditions. Likely not, given that the previous court decision specifically prohibited a waiver of rights. It's all the more reason to prohibit further maladaptive development at Capistrano Shores Mobile Home Park. All along the stretch of coast, San Clemente and Dana Point's beaches are being stolen from the public. Miles of beach have, are, gone, are gone due to legal armoring and illegal redevelopment. The Capistrano Shores HOA clearly intends to rebuild the seawall because they applied for a new seawall permit in 2012. And even though that's unfiled, it's obvious with this amount of redevelopment that they will seek that in the future. Um, the new home before you today would rely on an existing seawall and that in and of itself makes it deniable under the Coastal Act. It's really time to phase out this pattern of development that has eroded California's beaches over the past decades and threatens to completely drown them as sea levels rise. Please choose to preserve our coast today by denying this application. Thank you.